In this video, we will be discussing, what is a volatility smile, what are its implications and why must we know about this when considering option pricing. So, let's get started. First, let's understand what a volatility smile is. As you can see, the volatility smile is a plot of the different strike prices of an option contract on the x-axis, and the implied volatility, given by the Black-Scholes model on the y-axis. This curve basically says that, as we move from at the money contracts towards in the money, or out the money contracts, the implied volatility increases significantly. This nature of implied volatility is observable in the market. But why is this important to know? It is because, options are priced based on the Black-Scholes model, which assumes volatility to be constant, for different strike prices for an underlying asset, if the time to maturity for the contracts is the same. Let's have a look at the Black-Scholes model formula and understand the different inputs to it. The BSM formula depends on five variables. The stock price, S. The strike price, K. The risk-free rate, RF. The time to maturity, T. And the implied volatility, Sigma. Data for four of these are easily available to us. The stock price is the price at which the stock is trading, easily available from the market. The strike price, will be mentioned in the option contract. The risk-free rate has many close proxies, like LIBOR, or OIS, etc. We assume the risk-free rate of 4%. Time to maturity can easily be calculated from the expiry date mentioned in the option contract. But we are left with one uncertain element, sigma. And the problem is that this input significantly affects the model result. So, we have two objectives at hand here, 1, determine how to calculate implied volatility using the Black-Scholes model. Secondly, prove using the volatility smile that BSM assuming of constant volatility is incorrect. First, let us assume some arbitrary value for implied volatility. Also, we set the same volatility value for all the option contracts, as per BSM assumption of constant volatility. This gives us a flat volatility line, as indicated by BSM, but we had taken an arbitrary number for volatility. Let's rectify that first and then check the shape of the curve. To calculate the implied volatility, first let's dig a little deeper into the BSM formula. This is what the formula looks like. We are aware of a couple of terms in this equation, like, the spot price S, the strike price K, the risk-free rate R and the time to maturity, t. What we don't know are the variables d1 and d2. d1 and d2 are given by these formula. Now, let's see how to put all of these to use. First we calculate d1, as given by the formula discussed earlier. Next we calculate nd1. This is simply the cumulative probability for the value that we get in D1, and we use Excel's norm as test function for that. Similarly, we calculate D2 and ND2 values. One can think of ND1, in this equation, as the delta of the option. And, ND2 can be thought of the option being exercised, with the assumptions of a risk-neutral world. Now that we have the values of all the variables, let's calculate the option price, given by the BSM equation. We plug in all the variables, ones that are already available, and ones that we have calculated, and we get the option price. We like to call this as the model price. Notice that the model price is different from the actual price of the call, which was being traded in the market. The nearness of the values is simply because I have chosen a near-perfect implied volatility number. This number is biased because I had already goal seek to find the true number. We will see how to do that. But you can start with any number here. 
the objective is to change this implied volatility number in such a way that the model price exactly matches with the traded price. We can do this manually, but that would be too tiresome a process. For faster processing, we use Excel's Goal Seek feature. To do this, go to Data, and then from the What If Analysis drop down menu, select Goal Seek. Let's understand these items. Set cell is the cell value that we want to change. This would be the model price value. To value is the value that we want the model price to become. This will be the actual option price. And, by changing cell will be the implied volatility cell. To conclude, what we are telling Excel is that, change the model price value to the actual price, by changing the implied volatility number. Since our model price calculation included implied volatility as input, Excel tries different values of volatility, till it finds one, which makes the model price same as the actual price. Notice that the volatility number has changed, such that the model price now becomes the actual price. We need to repeat this for each of the lines below, that is, for each of the contracts. To do this, we have written a small macro, that repeats this process for each of the contracts. As all the values get updated, notice how the graph changes. This has changed from a flat line to one similar to the volatility smile. Thus, we have managed to prove that the Black-Scholes assumption of constant volatility is incorrect. Now if we compare the actual graph, this, with this model graph, we notice a few differences. First, the graph on the left is not exactly a smile, it is more of a smirk, what we call a skew. This is typical of equity option contracts. The skew is mostly attributed to a feature visible in the market, called crashophobia. Investors and traders hedge their long position in the market, mostly by buying out of the money puts. When markets fall, these puts suddenly turn profitable. Congratulations, you have learnt about volatility smile and how to calculate implied volatility from an option contract. You can download this file for your reference. The link to the data that I have used in this file is also mentioned there. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching.